Today we're talking about AMS. Not this one, but this. The Box Turtle. And what if I told you that you could build this for only a hundred bucks? The Box Turtle isn't just a multi-filament system. It also stores and dries your filament. And even better, it works with any printer running Clipper. And let's see what I've got. This here was the cheapest motor that I could find on AliExpress. The frame was already cut to size and I/O board. Technically, you didn't need this, but I bought it anyway. The same as this one, the Turtleneck PCB, which in the end I didn't use. A motor, switch, LEDs, a fan, 8mm shaft, bearings, buck converter, hub cutter, extruder gears, and bolting clips. For the board, I didn't go with the AFC light because of this, the price. So instead, I go with the cheaper route, an AFC X board, which I know didn't make to the same standard as the AFC light, but I decided to take a chance on a newer version. Worst case, I'll swap it for an AFC light later. An MJF nylon gear and spacers, which you could grab from today's video sponsor, JLC 3DP. If you never heard of them, JLC 3DP is a one-stop shop for makers. They offer loads of material choices from regular FDM plastic to SLM titanium, all at a really affordable prices. Start from just 30 cents. They even have a $70 coupon for new users. I use JLC 3DP to order some MJF gears. And not only did they ship in just two days after ordering, but everything came packed like a tank. I mean, look at the amount of bubble wrap that they use. So if you're planning to build your own box turtle and want a professionally made PCB, something machine or print, or want some MJF gear like me, just grab the file and let JLC 3DP do the rest. Check out the link in the video description to see what they can do for your project. Again, big thanks to JLC 3DP for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the build. The bad thing about self-source is that you have to do everything by yourself, including the most boring part, the wiring. You have to crimp, you have to solder, you have to cut. Then we install some heat set, and now we could put the frame together. You now have 5 of these, the one that we'll be going in is the longest one. Now we put these little bearings between the filament and the switch. Now we can check if the filament fits. Looks like it clears. I didn't have to redrill the hole. Now put in some gears and close it up. Now we're done. Time to do this boring ECAS couplers. If you don't know how to put them together, here's how. You put the two parts together and press it down. And there you go, you have it. Now you put the couplers into the housing. This is so hard to push in. I have to use the hammer. There you go. Now you put the idler hubs to the housing. Put the motors in, and now we're actually done. Now for the respoolers. This system was used to rewind the filament from the hot end back to the spool using a brush motor. It's the reason why you can't just use a regular mainboard with just a stepper driver. The respooler is what made the box turtle stand out from others MMU like an ESCF, which you need to build your own buffer system. Let's see if it spins. For the TPU tire, if they are hard to install, you could heat them up to make the installation process easier. Yeah, it's easier. Pops right in. 
So now we put our respoolers, extruder and switch to the frame. And after that, we'll do the wiring. Our box turtle assembly is now complete. Box turtle requires a clipper extension called AFC and it works quite well. Alright, let's talk about a spot where you could save some serious cash. The control board. I decided to really lean into the budget aspect of the build and went with this AFC export. And get this, it cost a quarter of a price of the recommended board. I could literally buy 4 of these for the price of one. It seemed like an absolute no-brainer. And that feeling continued when I bought it on. The physical install was a total breeze, but the moment I opened the clipper config, that's when I found the hidden cost. The documentation was entirely in Chinese, and because of one tiny hard to translate detail on the motor PWM pin, I spent an entire day of my life hunting down a problem that made me question my life choice. So, take it from me, unless you really loved a challenge and have a time to burn, do not go with this board. But if you do, that's a massive saving. After all that hassle, I can finally insert the filament into the box turtle and get it to work. Okay, so with the board working and the printer is not on fire, it was time for the main event. Since my two head was not compatible with a filament cutter, I spent like 5 hours just trying to shape the perfect filament tip. You need this clean, consistent point to unload without jamming everything up. I tweaked retraction, ramming speeds, temperatures, cooling moves. I tried everything suggested and ended up with this. It's not great, but it's fine. After all of that, I have to be real with you guys, I couldn't get it to print a thousand swap multi-color print, the tip just weren't consistent enough, but here's the printer loading some filament, pooping, and printing some benchies. Now it's feeding filament to the hot end. I would say it's pretty loud. There you have it folks, if you have any question or want to see me do a multicolor print, please leave them in the comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.